My first guest tonight is an American icon who stars in the new film, A Wrinkle in Time. No time to waste, Meg. Mom is what's it? You just have to find the right frequency and have faith in who you are. Find your father. Shall we? Please welcome Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Enjoy themselves. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it was good to see you again. Good to see you. You did my show. Oh, yeah, I did Super Soul, Soul Conversations. Conversations. It was so fun. Thank you Insightful. for having me on. I was honored to be Thank that, that lovely group that. of people that you had. Thank you for doing that. Now, this has been almost a year, or maybe a little more than a year, since you were on this show. Yeah. Now, at the beginning of 2017, I think it was January of 2017, you were here. You said that 2017 was going to be your year of adventure. Exactly. Yeah. Your year of adventure. Yeah, I actually did do that. I'm actually, you know, so sometimes you will set a goal and then it doesn't happen and you're like, okay, that's all right. Okay. But <laughs> this year it actually happened. I, I, cause for me the biggest adventure was New Zealand. And I hear you've been there. Oh, I love it. Yeah, Isn't sure. It? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah, uh, New Zealand's amazing. I want everyone in the world to go. I wish I could say you go to New Zealand, you go to New Zealand. <laughs> I wish you I could. could. <laughs> you actually could. Okay. I wish I could. Now, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to get to the movie in just a moment, but I want to talk about 60 Minutes here uh, first. It. So you did something. You did, you've did. you done a round, two roundtables, right, mm -hmm, so far, mm -hmm. with pro and anti-Trump voters in Michigan. That sounds like the sort of thing you'd want to bring a helmet to. <laughs> because people are so divided, or a cup. Like yeah, some, yeah, People yeah. are so divided these days. The, the, the truth of the matter is that the first time it was a little awkward, and I could tell that there were people who actually didn't want me sitting next to them. Yeah. So you know what I do when you don't want me sitting next to you? I lean in, I lean all the way in. <laughs> and then I, I lean in. Yeah, what, like people seem nervous or something? Not nervous. I think they, they actually told me later that they thought that uh, I would bring my own political stuff there and that they weren't that happy to see me. That's what they said to me afterwards. But now I went back like six months later and mm -hmm. that group was still... This is what happened. I, I wanted to go to 60 Minutes because I thought, let's see what we can do to bridge the divide in the country. Can you get both sides talking to each other? And that group of 14 people stayed in contact even though they didn't know we were coming back. Because we didn't know we were coming back. Mm -hmm. And they all started this whole Facebook page called America's Hope, and they started... They still... Not one person changed their mind, mm -hmm. but they listened, learned to listen to each other and disagree without being so disagreeable. That's what happened. Wow, okay, so when... That's, which means it can happen. That's helpful. That's helpful. As long yeah. as people keep talking, yeah. you can at least yeah. negotiate where the country happen. is going. Yeah. If you, can't, if you don't talk to each other. Means you can hear another person's point of view, at least. Yeah. Right. Um, so um, how is that different? Like, being on 60 Minutes and, and, and doing these kind of interviews, obviously you had well, the talk show of talk shows for how 20 years or something like that. 25? I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. An extra five years. I don't know. <laughs> When, so you had, for when are you on years. 25, that extra five, you're going to be counting it. You're going to be counting it. So, <laughs> so uh, how is this different? Because you certainly had all that experience of talking to what's people. What's different the... is, is that everybody who watched the Oprah show all those years, they generally knew where my, my opinions were. And I try really hard to not to be biased either way. Just to be, I literally say I'm going to go in, my only intention is to listen 
and to keep an open mind and to let other people be heard. Mm -hmm. Rather than my own show, I was a participant in that show and I had my opinions and people knew where my values You're were. You're a good talker. I'm a good talker, but so I try to be a better listener when I'm doing 60 Minutes. Oh, so you're not doing a talk show, you're doing a listen I'm show. I'm doing a listening <laughs> show, kind of. Now, you did have uh, one very big fan who watched you uh, oh, uh, on the, yeah. the second night that you did it. Uh, this is a, a young man named Donald who lives in Washington. Yeah. <laughs> he said, just watched a very insecure Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> who at one point I knew very well. Interview a panel of people on 60 Minutes. The questions were biased and slanted. The facts incorrect. Hope Oprah runs so she can be exposed and defeated just like all the others. Mm. Now, I would say... If there is one thing I associate with you, it's insecure. <laughs> that is... You just don't seem like you're coming uh, from a place of that. strength. I didn't, I didn't understand that, but here's the deal. I, I take uh, all criticism, particularly over the years. I remember a long time ago, a critic had said, uh, when I first started television, she ate the furniture, she ate the questions, she ate the... That. So I actually listened to that mm -hmm. and act became a better listener. Mm -hmm. So when I heard th that the president had tweeted that, I went back and I looked at the tape to see, you know, what is he actually talking about? Was I biased? Uh, did we, were we not fair? And uh, I, I didn't get it. I really, but I did examine it. I called up the 60 Minutes producers. I said, hey, let's, is there any validity to this at all? And we all looked at it and said no. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree. Okay. I would agree. Okay. Now, so... Here's, here's, another, here's another adventure that you had this year. Yeah. Is that not, you didn't just go to New Zealand. You did New Zealand, and you became a blonde superhero. I went to Mrs. New Zealand, Witch. and I got a doll. You got a doll. Yes. Did you, did you read the book? I did. Up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read it. I read it. I remember I had it read to me in third grade by Mrs. Kelly. Thank you, Mrs. Kelly. And I read it myself. Nobody in... forgets their third grade teacher. No, no. We all and then I read it myself right when I was 10, just a few years later. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I just, I remember, I, I, I can't wait to see the movie because I remember uh, Mrs. Witch and What's, what's It. What's It? And, and Who. And Who. And then Dad disappears. That's and the there, whole there's point. The it. I was so frightened of It. Yes. Did uh, you know what It was? I, no, I didn't know what It, it was. It is the darkness. It is the darkness. <laughs> You just, want, you just want Darth Vader on me yeah, right there. Yeah, no. It is the it darkness. It is the darkness. It and is what the is, darkness. And what is the darkness The darkness again? is the darkness that's spreading so fast these days. The only thing faster than the light is the darkness. And the darkness is inside you. It's when evil takes over inside your How brain. do you keep that from happening? Because I don't want to be evil. You have to stay in the light. You have to stay in the light. And that's what Mrs. Witch is. My character is, and Mindy Kalins, and Reese Witherspoon, who I hear the girl's going to be on this week. Yes, next year. And so, so uh, we are all these, um, these angel millennial women mm -hmm. who help the girl, Meg, played by the golden Storm Reed, played by her, who's searching for her father. And we help her find her father. Wow. We shall find your father. Yeah, I know, I know. It's an eternal struggle. Yes, come with me. Yes, yes. Well, did you read these books growing up? No. This book growing up? Did, did not make my neighborhood, did not. No? No. <laughs> I just didn't. Yeah. I, I just didn't. No. Wow. I had other stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little frightening. I think it is, and so I don't. I wouldn't advise it for like six year olds. Mm -hmm. But you said third grade, so Seven, by thir third, eighth grade, uh, eight, eight years old, eight maybe. years old. So around mm -hmm. eight, eight mm -hmm. to fourteen, I would say is really great. And so take your kids; it's a wonderful thing to do. And daughters, I mean, take your daughters, take your sons too. Mm -hmm. But I think young kids are going to love it, mm -hmm. love it. And what's the darkness today these days? Do you think? What do you think the darkness is? <laughs> no, I'm not leading. I'm not leading. I promise you. You think... are not leading? I'm not. I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> it's this pervasive feeling that one, one group of people is better than the other, or mm -hmm. one side is better than the other side. Mm -hmm. And so, in times of darkness, we must all be warriors for the light, Stephen. Oh, I like that. Yes. I like that. <laughs> now... We got to take a little break right here. I want to talk to you about your upcoming presidential run, which obviously. I said. <laughs> I know. I know you're not going to do it. 
Yeah. You've said you've said you, you won't do it, but I have a special guest stopping by who might be able to convince you otherwise. So please just hold there. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. We're right back with more Oprah Winfrey. <laughs>